Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala eşrafil enbiyeyi vel mursalin. Muhammedun Resulullah sallallahu aleyhi ve aleyhi ve sahbihi ve sellem. Teslimen kathiren kathira. Ama badu, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalaluhu, he said to us, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ أُولَئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in surah al-Baqarah which means Surely and truly and verily we will test you with the following. We will test you with with fear, with hunger, with the destruction of uh, or loss in wealth, والأنفسي والثمرات Loss in yourself, meaning disease, accidents, things like this. And samarat, meaning children, spouses, families. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to test. Surely and truly we will test. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And glad tidings and good news and bashara for the people who have sabr. Wabashiri sabirin. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described who are these people. Alladhina hum asabat, alladhina idha asabatu musibatun, qalu inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raju. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, these are the people who when they face the calamity, when they face the musibah, they say, we are from Allah and to Allah is our return. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pronounced his reward. What is this Bashar? Bashar is for those who say this. And what is the Bashar? Ulaika alayhim salawatum mir rabbihim wa rahmah. Wa ulaika humul muhtadun. Allah said on these people, there is salam, there is blessing from their Rabb Jalla Jalaluhu, and there is rahmah, there is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on these people. Allah will descend his and he send down his mercy. And he sends down this Bashara uh, on these people. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them that stamp. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ulaika humul muhtadun. Truly, these are the people who are rightly guided. My brothers and sisters, I um, began with this uh, beautiful uh, ayat because today we are facing uh, a situation of that kind and that situation is if you uh, see the screen that I am sharing here the situation is where we have um, we are facing globally uh, a situation which is within courts for want of another word a situation of global disaster we are facing threat to life and uh, whether anyone still wants to uh, stay with the conspiracy theories of all of this is made up and all of this is false and it is not true and so on. Believe me, there are over a million people in the world who would disagree with you if they could speak. Um, we are facing the consequences of that, which is the consequences of Corona and uh, or COVID-19, which is uh, economic uh, which are consequences, which are economic consequences, losses of jobs, uh, losses of entire livelihoods, a complete uh, reorientation and a complete change in the environment of business and commerce. And all that goes with it. Uh, people are in trouble because uh, those who have borrowed, uh, who have mortgages, for example, on their, on their houses, uh, those who have borrowed money for that, they are in trouble paying those mortgages. People who have borrowed money for cars and stuff are in trouble because they've lost their jobs. They can't do that. 
um, homeschooling, which was uh, a, a some some something of a um, novelty, uh, and we had sort of debates about you know should we do it, should we not do it, uh, is it worth it, not worth it. Today, homeschooling has become the norm. I mean, it, it's it's there everywhere, whether you like it or not. Your children are studying from home, uh, and you are uh, you are trying to teach them. Um, similarly, working from home, which was again in some com in some companies, some of the IT companies, this was a, a sort of perk. Uh, today, that has become the norm. So, which has two sides to it. One is the uh, convenience for those who can see it as a convenience, and for those whom it is actually a convenience of actually being at home with your family, not having to commute. Your commute is from your bedroom to your office or sometimes from the bed to the desk in the same room or the same uh, you know, space. Uh, two, the, uh, the downside of it, which is what is the consequence of being home 24 hours. So a lot of this stuff, I don't want to uh, list that because all of us have been experiencing that, we all know this. Um, whoever thought that planes wouldn't fly, whoever thought that off entire office buildings would shut down, whoever thought that there would be a revolution in the real estate and rental markets, there would be a complete revolution in the, uh, in, the in the holidays, uh, hotels, uh, travel industry, uh, you know, about all, all the whole be complete and total disruption. Now, when people are faced with this kind of uh, huge uh, turmoil, uh, three kinds of things happen, three kinds of reactions. And that's why today uh, mental illness and, uh, and loneliness is almost as big a killer as COVID, uh, thanks, to, thanks to COVID, because that's the, that's the other side of uh, this whole COVID thing. So the people are faced with three different things, three, three things. Simultaneously, some people may, fe may, may uh, experience all of them, some people may experience uh, one or more of them. One is a fear of annihilation. I will die. I might die. Now, as Muslims, you might say, well, you know, well, this is big news. We, we knew this already. Rasulullah told, uh, told us this uh, 1500 years ago, 1400 years ago, uh, where he said that when you make salam on one side, do not believe that you will be able to complete your salam on the other side. Know that death can come at any time. But I ask you, for how many of us was that a reality? All those who are running in COVID phobia, Go and look at yourself in the mirror and make istighfar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a direct, um, you know, uh, it's, it's a direct harf. Uh, it's a direct point at the, at, the, at the level of your iman. Because if you really believed what Rasul, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, then where is this COVID, why is this COVID phobia? Why, why are you afraid that you will die? Right? You will die. I will die. قُلْ يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ مَلَكُ الْمَوْتِ الَّذِي مُكِّلَ بِكُمْ Allah told us this long ago. So therefore, uh, fear of annihilation, myself. Similarly, fear of annihilation as far as my family is concerned and so on and so forth. Second thing is there is a huge amount of disruption and confusion uh, in the minds because everything that we took as permanent, everything that we took as given standard, okay, this is over, I have done with that, um, I don't have to think about it anymore, has been turned upside down on its head. For example, uh, we, we, I may have had a, a, a great job in a great company. I'm looking forward to a great career. Uh, I was under some anxiety uh, before I got this job. You know, I finished my education, what not. I applied to the company. Will I get the job? Will I not get the job? What not? And all of that was finished, signed and sealed. Alhamdulillah, I have this wonderful job, career opportunity based on my projected earnings. Maybe I even borrowed money. Now, remember all the stuff that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us against, we did it. We went against what Allah told us to do and now we are facing the consequences. So based on these projected earnings, I borrowed money and I bought a car on, rent, on, on a higher purchase or rent or what not you want to call it. I bought a house, I mortgaged that, I have this payment, I have that payment. I said, no problem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be on his arsh, I am not bothered. I am worried about my company. I am thinking my company will keep paying me so I can pay off all of these things. Inna lillahi wa inna Right? Suddenly, again, I'm trying to uh, be concise. Suddenly, all of these assumptions that we had about ourselves and about our lives going forward were turned upside down on their heads. So disruption and confusion. And the result of these two things, the result of fear of annihilation 
and disruption and confusion in our thought process, in our strategies, in our plans for ourselves. Remember, in 2015, one wonderful thing which we all have to face, in 2015, anyone who was asked the question, where do you see yourself five years from now? Anyone who answered that question in 2015 was wrong. Every single one. Right? All the Jyotishis and all the fortune tellers and all the seance artists and all the Vastu experts and all the this one and that one, not one single one of them predicted COVID-19. So go believe them. Go to them for your future. My brothers and sisters, the result of these two things, fear of annihilation and disruption in thought, disruption in plans, disruption in strategies, results in despair and depression. Despair and depression. Worst form of that, suicides, but even where that doesn't happen, despair, depression, uh, you know, mood changes, all sorts of stuff. And that's why I said that loneliness and depression and mental illness uh, seems to be uh, an equally uh, lethal killer in these days of COVID. Now, this is the bad news. Now, let me give you the good news. And the good news is what must you do? Now, here is what you must do, which is develop resilience. Now, what is resilience? That's why the title of this uh, uh, talk is uh, 2021 Resilience, the best asset. Now, what is resilience? Resilience is a combination of three things. Three things. Number one is to understand the situation that you are in and to face those facts, to face those brutal facts straight up. No fooling yourself because believe me, there is only one person in this whole world you can fool and that's yourself. Nobody else. Don't do that. No looking at the situation that we are in through rose tinted glasses. Uh, no belief in all kinds of, oh, but this will come to our rescue and that will come to our rescue. Right now, it is the issue of, uh, you know, saying, thinking that, oh, once I get the vaccine, I'm home and dry. Nothing can happen to me. Don't do any of that. Right? Don't do any of that. Facing the facts. So understand what the facts are and face them. Brutal facts. No mincing words, no, uh, you know, uh, no fooling yourself. Number two is to have tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never lose track of the fact that this world belongs to Allah. The COVID virus belongs to Allah and the cure also belongs to Allah. And you belong to Allah and I belong to Allah and we say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Tawakkul. And the third thing is the desire and the tendency and the attitude to help others. To help others. Because we are all in this together. This is not only for Muslims. This is not only for Indians. This is not only for Arabs. This is not only for non-Arabs. This is everybody is in it together. Now, let's look at these in some detail. Now, what is it that we need to understand? We need to understand that whether we like it or not, the nature of this disaster that we are facing is a bit more than what we think we are facing. Because we think it's only COVID. But let me tell you, COVID is only one of the issues. And it's not even the biggest issue. Now you might say, well, you know, how can you say that? Because I'm hearing COVID all the time. Well, I say to you that that is why you think it's the biggest issue. Because that's the only thing that people are talking about. And just as I say all the time, I think yesterday's lecture I said in my, my uh, evening lectures, uh, I said that the reason why the Akhirah is not real to us, even though it is absolutely real, there's nothing more real than the Akhirah. But to, to us, in, if you look at our lives, the Akhirah is not real. And the reason for that is because we don't talk about it. Whereas this dunya is very real to us, even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it mata'ul ghurur. Inna wal hayatul dunya illa mata'ul ghurur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it is just a figment of the imagination. But that, that looks real to us because we talk about it all the time. So today, COVID be has become the number one concern. And it should be, the, it should be a concern. I, I'm not saying that it should not be a concern. It should definitely be a concern. Please, wear masks, cover the nose and mouth, wash your hands, Avoid all gatherings. Make sure your, your, your hands are sanitized. Do not go and visit people. Do not have holidays. Uh, don't go traveling for holidays. 
do not have parties even to the masajid ensure that you maintain distance take all precautions because this is very much part of islam and in islam we are concerned not only about our own safety but we are concerned about the safety of everybody else so with my irresponsible behavior if i am endangering somebody else then i am answerable to allah subhanahu wa taala for the harm that i am causing to those people so please don't say well i don't care about covid you may not care but other people care so do not do things which are potentially dangerous but having said that i submit to you that covid is by no means the number one danger that we as human beings are facing remember i told you face the brutal facts so you might say well what are the other dangers we are facing we are facing a, the danger of our economic well being of our uh emoluments of our salaries of our incomes we are facing the danger of that Dan we are facing danger to that from disruptive technologies and from artificial intelligence right now you might say well you know let's get rid of it no it's not going to happen it is not going to happen and believe me what you are seeing today in terms of artificial intelligence and disruptive technologies is only the beginning it's only going to get within quotes whether you like it or not call it better call it worse but it's only going to increase for example here in america one of the one of the things which is directly uh, within the in the target looking at looking at it through the sides uh, is self driving cars and trucks there are 5 million truck drivers in the united states the big 16 wheelers my dream car the 5 million of them multiply that by 5 to get families 25 million people they have mortgages they have children education they have health insurance they have to buy their daily bread and some butter with it we have heard lots and lots of talk about how self driving trucks <clears throat> are good for the truck owners because instant turnaround time constant driving there is nothing to all you need is a big enough fuel tank and it'll take you from one end of the barica to another one without even stopping at all or even if you have to stop minimal stops drivers don't need rest they don't need drivers technology will take care of safety so those trucks will be will be faster but they will be safer than a truck being driven by a driver who might be <clears throat> who might be tired who might be sleepy and so on and so forth but look at it from the from the perspective of the drivers it means a loss in the only job that he can do in his current state now the analysts they say well you can retrain them go look at a truck i know i know some people who who drive trucks what retraining are you going to do to do to do to that person that person is trained to drive a highly sophisticated machine it's not an easy thing it's a very complex thing and he's an expert in that area but like all subject experts he's an expert in that one area it took him half a lifetime to get that expertise now you you make that null and void and you tell him i'm going to retrain you as what as what similarly many other things artificial intelligence i mean this is not the topic today so i'm not going to into this for you know in detail but it it affects everything it affects every single thing including jobs like first responders like medical uh, diagnostics uh, like legal um, uh, you know legal work especially research work and so on and so forth Uh, what solicitors uh, used to do or or do, and some of this we are seeing right now. We have uh, many of us have experienced uh, telemedicine, for example. Right? What is telemedicine? Telemedicine is loss of job for somebody. It's convenience, yes, but why? What is it that makes it convenient? Think about that. Second big killer, and all of these are much bigger than COVID. Second big one. 
and not in order of priority, maybe I should put this as the first one, is poverty and income disparity. Poverty, global poverty and income disparity. Yes, if I take a timeline of the last 50 years, globally, people, there are fewer people who are poorer than they were 50 years ago and the level of that poverty also is less than it was at that time. But if I take the numbers, absolute numbers, there are far more people who are poorer than they were 50 years ago. Global poverty is a cancer. Global poverty is killing us, but we don't see that. And so also is income disparity. We thought this COVID is a great equalizer, but you know and I know that there were seven or eight people, seven or eight billionaires who became trillionaires. Whereas the rest of the world, the, the so-called middle class collapsed into the so-called poor people, poor class. So disparity of income. Number three is politics. Toxic, fascist politics seems to have taken the world by storm. Lots of mindless followers, lots of mindless supporters for toxic, fascist politics who don't understand what they are supporting. A day will come when they will understand and they will suffer. But by then it will be too late for a lot of us. And the last one, and again, every time I talk about each of these, I think I should, you know, upgrade it to uh, number one, which is global warming. Now, there are experts who believe that we are already over the brink and we are, we are in free fall. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't agree. I don't disagree. I don't subscribe to that view. If I did, I wouldn't be talking to you. As simple as that. I like to take a positive view of life. I like to take a view to say that I can still make a difference as long as I'm breathing. I'd like to do something positive for somebody in the world. I don't care who that is. But I don't want to just give up and say, well, you know, we are all done. No. But global warming is probably the number one danger that faces us. And as I told you, far, far worse than COVID can ever be. Because let's face it, absolute numbers of COVID are enormous, but percentage wise, 1%, which means that if you get COVID, there's 99% chance that you will, inshallah, be cured and you will walk out of the place. I know personally people who are in their 80s, who were in ICUs, on ventilators, and who today are sitting and eating biryani. Alhamdulillah. Global warming will not spare anybody. Now, I have requested uh, Atif to share two videos with you. One is called Four Horsemen and the second one is called An Inconvenient Truth. Now, after this program, my submission to you is go home and watch those two things as required watching and required reading if you are interested in knowing what exactly is happening in the world. So please go do that. Now, this is the, these are the brutal facts. I know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking depressing, uh, depressing stuff, but what to do? I mean, this is the reality. And I'm not going to fool you. So this is the reality. I'm trying to, I've tried to uh, condense it as much as I could, but this is the actual reality. We are facing a global disaster and that global disaster is not COVID. COVID is one part of it, but it is technology. It is artificial intelligence. Much more than that is poverty and income disparity. Much more than that, it is fascist, toxic politics. And much more than that is global warming. And believe me, all of these are connected. All of these are connected. They're not individual by themselves. Every single thing is connected. Therefore, what should we do? Now, this is all the good stuff. So, so enjoy. What must we do? Number one thing to do is to remember that this world does not belong to this one or that one, does not belong to this party or that party, does not belong to this billionaire or that billionaire, does not belong to this uh, guru or that guru, does not belong to you, does not belong to me. Because every single one of us today who is walking on this earth as if he or she owns it is one day going to go inside this earth. 
one day they are going to become and you are going to become and I am going to become worm food. One day we are going to become nitrogen manure which will push up the grass. <clears throat> and I don't care what you believe. I don't care whether you believe in Allah or not. I don't care whether you are Muslim or not. Makes no difference. You will go six feet under. I will go six feet under in one way or the other. Right? And by six feet under, I mean that in an allegorical sense. You may, you may say, well, I get cremated. No problem. <clears throat> get cremated. You're still going to the same place. The Alam al-Barzak. So therefore, this is a matter of great hope. This is something which should be should make us very happy. We say, Alhamdulillah, whatever is happening on this earth is going to end. Very good news. Very good news. Whatever is happening on this earth is going to end. In 1258, Hulegu Khan surrounded Baghdad with his army and annihilated every living, every living thing in Baghdad. He killed everybody. He killed all the men and women. He killed the children. He killed the dogs and the cats and the cows and the goats and the uh, whatever, chickens. Every living thing in Baghdad was annihilated on the hukum on the order of Hulegu Khan. Including the Abbasi Khalifa who was, a, who was from the family of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then, where is Hulegu Khan today? Is he alive? Do you have his phone number? Hulegu Khan also went where he sent the rest of them. Everything ends. Alhamdulillah. We thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Because imagine the world if there was no death. Imagine if all the if all the toxic people that lived on this earth continue to live. Right? So, Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put an end to everything. Now, what must we do? We must do the first and foremost is to build our ta'aluk with Allah. Ta'aluk ma'Allah. Now, you might say, well, this is uh, Sheikh Yawar and his old uh, broken record, ta'aluk ma'Allah. Yes. When I'm gone, I want you to remember me like this. That this was a broken record. The man could say nothing else except ta'aluk ma'Allah. Alhamdulillah. Ta'aluk Allah. Connection with Allah. And part of the broken record is what? Tahajjud. Pray tahajjud. Stand in the night. Cry before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is yours and you are Allah. You, you belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not worship anyone other than Allah. Worship only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stand in the night. Cry before Allah. Tell Allah your story. He knows your story anyway, but he likes to hear it. So tell him your story. Now, how do you develop ta'aluk? How do you develop connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Two things, khashya and shukur. The awe and majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart. How do you get that? By reading Quran, by reading and seeing how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduced himself and by looking around you and seeing the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the biggest of them today is COVID. One little virus brought this entire world with all its arrogance and all its so-called money power and so-called military power and so-called scientific power and so-called this power and that power, one little virus brought it all to a dead halt. The khudrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look around us. See the beauty of, and magnificence of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fill your heart with the nur of Allah and dispel everything else from the heart. Like a thousand watt halogen bulb when it lights up, you see nothing else. If you look into it, and I definitely do not tell you to look into a thousand watt halogen bulb, you will go blind. But allegorically speaking, if you look into that and you turn away, you will only see that light. You will not see anything else. This is what happens, for example, for uh, animals which get blinded in, uh, in, in uh, headlights uh, in the night on, on the roads. The animal can't see anything because of the light. The light blinds you. This is a beautiful blindness because this, then, you, then you are only seeing the light. When you are seeing the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's khudrat and his majesty and glory, when the khashat of Allah, then you do not see disaster and you do not see uh, the, 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 the fear of people and makhluk will disappear from your heart. You will only see the nur of Allah everywhere you look. فَإِنَمَا تُوَلُّ فَسَمَّا وَجْهُ and then, shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, ya Allah, you gave me your understanding. You gave me, you helped me, you told me, you introduced yourself so I know you. I do not worship anyone other than you. 
I see things in proportion. I see the makhluk, I see the creation as creation, and I, I see the creator as the creator. I do not confuse the creation for the creator because some of this creation is so magnificent. It is so amazing. You have the sun and the moon. I look at the sun and I'm dazzled. I say, Wallah, is this the creator? It's not the creator. It's not even a, a, a particle of what the creator has created. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while we are. That's why I keep telling people, stop looking at all this COVID data. It's completely meaningless. Instead of that, take a deep breath and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, I do not have COVID. Alhamdulillah, I am able to breathe uh, freely. Right? Spend that time in thanking Allah instead of scaring the daylights out of you yourself for no reason. You didn't get it. Your family didn't get it. Alhamdulillah. For those people who got it, help them in every way you can. Make dua for them. But there's no sense in continuously burdening your mind and bombarding your mind with this COVID data and go on and on and on. And at the end of that, what happens? Nothing happens. Nothing has changed on the ground and you have just put yourself into a, into a, into a depressive spirit. So khashiyat and shukr together create hope, create love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the ta'aluk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Follow the sunnah because how do we get Allah to love us? He said, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell those people who claim to love Allah. Tell those people who claim to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who claim to love God. Tell them to follow you. Tell them to make your itiba. Tell them to emulate and imitate you. What will happen? Allah will love you. And when Allah loves you, what happens? Boundary condition, minimum. Allah will forgive all your sins and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most forgiving and most merciful. Ta'aluk with Allah. Second one, hope. Never lose hope in ultimate success because our hope does not depend on conditions. Our hope does not depend on material stuff. Our hope depends on the one who controls those conditions, on the one who sent those conditions. The Sahaba used to say, if the, uh, if the sky turned to copper and the earth turned to iron, we would still not lose hope in the fact that Allah will provide us food. We will not say what, what will happen when there is no rain, what, is, what will happen when, because these were agricultural people. He said they were farmers. They, will not, they did not say what will happen if there is no earth, what will happen if there is no rain. They said, I don't care. The one giving is the one who is free from all want and need. He is the Ar-Razzaq, he is the, he is the one who feeds and he does that with his power and his glory and his majesty. He does not need conditions, he creates conditions. Musabbibul Asbab. Kyun ghair ke aage haat phailate ho, bande ho, agar rab ke to rab se maangu. Why do you spread your hands? Why do you ask others than Allah? If you, are a, if you are a banda, if you are a slave, if you are a creature of Allah, then ask Allah. Ask Allah because he is the only one who likes those who ask. People dislike those who ask. But except Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes those who ask. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always, always, always have hope. To lose hope is kufr. In Islam, this is haram. To lose hope is kufr. Never lose hope. If you are losing hope, it means that you are saying even Allah cannot do anything. Now the Billah. Allah can do anything. So never, never, never lose hope. And remember, that's why I keep saying read history. I mentioned to you 1258. Imagine if you were a person living in Baghdad in 1258, you would be dead. Of course, you would have been killed by, by Hulegu's people. But at the time when you're looking at those armies, at the time when you see the army coming inside and and killing people randomly, what would be the level of your hope? What would be, and because you are Muslim, you would, you would say, well, you know, Islam is being annihilated. But guess what? Today in 2020, Islam is stronger than it has ever been. There are more Muslims in the world today walking the earth than they have ever been in the history of, of mankind in the history of Islam. Somebody died, somebody dies anyway. One day I will die, so what? Will Islam cease? No way. So, never lose hope. Number two, 
confidence. How? Because we believe in Allah. Because we know Allah. Introduce Allah to those who do not know Allah. We are not compelling anybody to accept Islam. No way. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the freedom, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَمَنْ قُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَالْيُمِنْ فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَالْيَقْفُرْ Allah said, say, the truth is your Rabb, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ Allah did not say, قُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّي He said, my Rabb is the, no. Is your Rabb, is your, is your creator, is your Rabb. Even if you don't recognize that, even if you don't want to accept that, he's still your Rabb. He's still the one who's feeding you. And you're free to, ra to recognize him, you're free to worship him, and you're free not to worship him. No problem, do what you want. But for us, Allah said, introduce Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to them. Say to them, Qul, rabbikum. The truth is your Rabb. Confidence. And third thing is, belief in the Akhirah. Belief in the Akhirah meaning that whatever is in this world, whether it is good, whether it is bad, will end. And one day I will stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever is in this world is temporary. But what is with Allah is permanent. Whatever is with you will perish. Whatever is with Allah will remain. One day we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we have this, then it helps us to put our conditions in perspective. I lost my job. Big deal. So what? Did I lose the one who feeds me? That is the question. You only lost one means by which he was feeding you. You know, my sheikh used to say, he used to say that if you if there is, for example, he said, if your friend uh, makes an announcement and says that there is dawat uh, aam, there is, uh, you know, general feeding. So say it is, you know, Eid day or something, and, and as we say uh, in the West, you know, open house. So there is an open house. Anybody, anybody from the street can walk in and uh, there is this food, which, there is this uh, dastar khan, there is this uh, sufra, there is this table which is spread and the food is laid out. Anybody can walk in and sit and eat. So you say, Alhamdulillah, this is my friend's uh, open house. So I will go. So this is your very, very close. He's a very, very dear friend. So now this friend is, of course, busy, you know, in the in the house and all the, all getting getting all the food placed and everything else. And there are bearers and so on. And people are doing his family. His family is helping everybody. So in that whole confusion, people coming and going, you also go and you sit down at this general table where everybody else is there. So you are surrounded by strangers. Anyone who walked off the street is there and you also sat there. Then suddenly your friend sees you. Right? He sees you. So what does he do? Your friend comes and grabs you by the shoulder, lifts you up and says, come. He takes away the plate in front of you, removes the plate. He says, come. Now my sheikh used to say, if that happens, what is in your heart? What do you feel? Do you feel, Allah, come, you, this man is depriving me of my food. I will go hungry. I will starve. Is this what you're thinking? He said, if that is what you are thinking, then you are insulting your friend. You are insulting that friendship. He said, you know what you will be thinking? You will have a big smile on your face. Big smile on your face. The man sitting next to you, he will say, why are you smiling? The man lifted you up from the place, from, from your eating place. The man took away your plate. You are smiling. What will you say? You will say, I'm not smiling because he lifted me up. I'm smiling because who lifted me up? Because of who lifted me up? I know the one who lifted me up. You know why he lifted me up from here? <clears throat> you know what is the meaning of that? The meaning of that is he's saying to me, this is not your place. This is for everybody. For you, I have a special place. Inside my house. Inside my house. Special place. The head table. A place of honor. Rizkun Kareem. Rizkun Kareem. Lahum Makfiratu wa Rizkun Kareem.
انما المؤمنون الذين اذا ذكر الله وجلت قلوبهم واذا تليت عليهم اياته زادتهم ايمانا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون الذين يقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون أولئك هم المؤمنون حقا لهم درجات عند ربهم ومغفرة ورزق كريم مؤمنون حقا هو أرضي هو ركنائز دي الرب جل جلال هو نوع الله سبحانه وتعالى who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who do not worship anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the mu'minun haqqa, the true believers, the true mu'minin. And for them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَرِزْقٌ كَرِيمٌ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ حَقَّ These are the true believers. And for them, there is forgiveness. And there is this beautiful Risk with honor. My brothers and sisters, you get this if you have a focus on the Akhirah. You get this if you have ta'aluk with Allah. For the one who has ta'aluk with Allah, there is no fear. La khawfun alayhim wa lahum yahzanun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the people of Jannah and about his awliya. He said they have no fear and they have no sadness. I ask Allah to make, us, make, make all of you among his awliya, inshallah. Third part is help because we are not alone Allah did not send us to be selfish Allah sent us to help others Allah sent us to help others dard dil ke waste paida kiya insaan ko warna taat ke liye kafi thi karubiyan I think the Misra Sani I got it wrong but the, the uh, translation of it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said for the shire, the, the, the poet said, Allah created human beings to help each other. Dard dil ke vaste paida kiya insaan ko. So that you feel for each other. So that you are compassionate, you are kind, you are helpful. For this Allah created the human beings. Warna taat ke liye kuch kam na thi kar rubiya. Otherwise for worship, Allah had no shortage of angels. Yes, we have been created to worship Allah, but the form of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, apart from what Allah has made for, one of the forms, one of the most beautiful forms of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to help people, is to help others. People, non-people, birds, animals, anybody. So therefore, in order to help, this whole concern for others, the focus on charity, the focus on compassion. Alhamdulillah, we have a religion where charity is a pillar of the faith. Zakat is one of the arkan of Islam, one of the pillars of Islam. We need to live this. It's not enough to talk about it. We need to live this. And live not only in terms of zakat, cal calculating the 2.5%. We, we must give thinking about it as an investment. And that's why I, I have said this always. Forget about the word sacrifice. There is no such thing. There is no qurbani. There is no sacrifice. There is always investment, investment, investment. What looks like qurbani, looks like qurbani because you don't understand what is happening over there. If you understand it, if you look at it from the perspective, from the way that Rasulullah looked at it, the way that his sahaba understood, then you will realize that every qurbani, whether it is time, whether it is money, whether it is effort, whether it is energy, whether it is talent, whatever you think somebody is sacrificing, that person is actually investing that. It's not a sacrifice. For a sacrifice to be a sacrifice, two conditions are required. One is the thing that you are sacrificing must belong to you. And number two is that you must not get any return for it. And that's why I say the only sacrifice is the tandoori chicken because the chicken died for you. Everything else is investment because if you have given something, if you have put something somewhere and you are getting a return, it's called an investment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's minimum condition is 1000%. Manja'a bil hasanati falahu ashru amthaliha. 
The one who comes with one good deed, Allah said, I will give you 10 like that. 1000%. That is the minimum condition, that's the minimum level that my Rabb Jalla Jalaluhu rewards with. 1000%. So where is the sacrifice? The reason I'm saying that is very important because if you see what you are doing as sacrifice, because sacrifice is net loss. I spent and I got nothing in return. How long will you do that? Not very long, believe me. But if you look at investment, I am investing and I am getting a thousand percent return. Now, how long will you do that? Not only will you do that continuously, but you will want to do more and more and more because the reality also is that even with a thousand percent, the absolute amount of return depends on the absolute amount invested. One dollar at 10 times is ten dollars. One million dollars at 10 times is ten million dollars. So even though these two people, one who invested one dollar and the other one who invested one million dollars, even though the rate of return is the same for both, what they take home is a lot more, is very different. And that is why the one who understands investment will do more and more and more. So quick recap, disasters produce depression because of the fear of annihilation and the disruption and confusion in thought and strategy and so on and so forth. The way to get out of that is number one, face the facts, don't fool yourself, understand the reality of what you're facing. What you're facing is a tiger, it's not a cat, even though both are cats. Understand that very clearly. And then say, what must I do? Number one, Trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For which I have to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So straighten my life, know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember the object is to get Allah to love me. Allah does not love those who do who go against what he has ordered. Nobody loves those who go against what they want, what they have told them to do. So stop disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look in your own life. Let me look in my own life and say, where and how am I disobeying Allah? Whatever it is, small or large is not the issue because the one we are disobeying is Allahu Akbar. He is the biggest, the largest, the most magnificent. So it's not a question of saying this is only a small disobedience. There's no such thing as a small disobedience. Isra al-Ma'asi huwa sabab su al-Khatima. To insist on sin is the result of a bad ending. We don't want that. We want, we want Husn al-Khatima. We want the best ending for ourselves. So, ta'aluk with Allah. Know who Allah is and build a connection with Him by gratitude, an attitude of gratitude. Be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything He has given us. Love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and show that love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by following Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not anybody else. Following Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did do what he told us to do. Stay away from anything that he forbade us and forbade for us. Allah said, Whatever my Nabi gives you, take it. Whatever my Nabi stops you from, stop. Have taqwa of Allah. Fear the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is severe in punishment. Well, Ghafur Rahim, he's the most forgiving. He's also very severe in punishment. Both. So develop the hope of Allah, khashat of Allah, the ta'aluk with Allah, the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fill your life with hope and confidence and remember the akhirah. Remember that one day we have to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Focus your whole life, all your decisions on that one thing to say, what will I do with this thing I'm doing today? How will I take this when I'm standing before Allah? I'm borrowing money from banks paying interest. I'm signing a deal which is equivalent to signing a, a declaration of war with Allah. I'm going to take this in my hand and stand before Allah. If that is not what you want to do, get rid of this now, 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 now. Stop watching this. Go do this. I am lying. I am cheating. I am backbiting. My whole social life is, is, is based on slandering somebody. I am taking away the haq. I am taking away the rights of women, of my sisters, of my wife, of my mother. 
because Allah gave me some power, because I'm a man, because I am a wage earner. I'm misusing this power. I'm using this power to oppress somebody because I'm a ruler. I'm using this power to oppress my people. Because I'm an employer, so I'm using this power to, to, to oppress my employees. Somebody comes to me in the form where, he, where the person is in need and I make, I make this person dalil. I make this person, I humiliate this person. And this person has to take the humiliation because he or she works for me. Inna lillahi wa inna lillahi rajun. Remember the day when you will stand before Allah and that person is going to be there and that person is going to ask for justice from the one who is just. Remember the akhirah. When you remember the akhirah, it puts this world into perspective. No matter COVID, no matter whatever. Alhamdulillah, Allah put me into this world for a specific time. I am answerable for that time. Let me do the best that I can do in that time. And inshallah, as far as I am concerned, I am home and dry. And the last one and most important is to help people. Help people in any way you can. If you can give money, give money. If you can make effort, make effort. If you can use your tongue, use your tongue. If you can write, write. If you use your talent and influence, use your talent and influence. Whichever way you can help people, help people. Islam does not differentiate. In helping people, Islam does not differentiate between Muslim and non-Muslim. You also don't differentiate. Whoever is in need, help them. Whatever is in need, help. Rasulullah said Allah gave Jannah to a man because he gave water to a hungry dog, to a, to a thirsty dog. There was a dog which was thirsty, was trying to drink water. There was a well, the dog couldn't get into the well. The man also had no utensils, so the man tied his shoelaces. He dipped his shoe into the well, brought the shoe out and the, do the dog drank water from the shoe of the man. Rasulullah said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Jannah to the man for that one action. Right? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, even if you know for certain that tomorrow morning is Yawmul Qiyamah, that the world is going to end tomorrow morning, it is the day of judgment tomorrow morning, he said, plant a tree. Right? Even if you know for certain, nobody knows, but he said, even if you know for certain, plant a tree. My brothers and sisters, this is a beautiful religion, Alhamdulillah. If we follow it. Islam is the name of a practice. It's not the name of a theory or a philosophy. A Muslim is a Muslim not because of his ethnicity. A Muslim is a Muslim not because he's black or white or because he's Arab or non-Arab, because he's American, non-American, Australian, whatnot. No. A Muslim is a Muslim because he or she believes in Islam. And he or she lives by Islam. And he or she practices Islam, whoever that person might be. It doesn't matter. That person is a Muslim because of the practice of Islam. Remember, you can know everything about Judo. You can know everything about Karate and about, about Aikido. All three together. You can be the, the half is. You can be, you can have memorized the books of history of, of Judo, Karate and Aikido. This, this knowledge will not help you in a street fight because you don't know how to practice Judo, Karate and Aikido. What will help you in a street fight is knowing how to practice. The practice of the art. The practice of the, of the practice will help you. So also with Islam. Knowing about Islam, we should know because unless we know about Islam, how will you practice it? But just knowing about Islam and keeping it at the theoretical level, believe me, is worthless. If anything, that knowledge will become a hujjat against you on the Day of Judgment. When you stand before Allah, you cannot say, I didn't know because you were the global expert. You wrote all those books on Islam. Practice Islam. Alhamdulillah, Allah gave it to us. Some of us were born into Muslim families. Other people came to Islam. Alhamdulillah. And as long as we have life, we can change our lives. Let us make a lot of istighfar because istighfar cools the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Istighfar removes calamities and disasters. And so let us make a lot of istighfar and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove this COVID uh, from the world and to uh, to to um, alleviate the suffering of people and to correct all the problems that the world is facing. Allahumma rahmataka arju fala takilla ila anfusana tarfatain aslih lana sha'anana kulla la ilaha illa ant We ask Allah to cover us with, with His mercy and to, uh, to rectify our affairs and not even to leave us to our own desires and our own um, you know, our own uh, wishes 
even for the blink of an eye. We ask Allah to take control of our lives and to enable us to live our lives in a way which is pleasing to Him because that's the only thing which matters. My brothers and sisters, I want to end with this. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with you and never to be displeased. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you from sources that you cannot imagine. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to illuminate your hearts with His nur, with His light, with His glory, with majesty and justice and with His guidance. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to guide you to Him, to do things which will please Him. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep you in a state of complete safety and honor and comfort and, and freedom from all trials and tribulations in this world. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take you in a state where you believe in Him, where you, where you glorify Him. You glorify His majesty and greatness where you believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take you in a state where He is pleased with you. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to resurrect you on the day of judgment in a state where He is pleased with you. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you the meeting. I ask Allah to give you the shade of His arsh, of His throne on the day when there will be no shade except His shade. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show you signs that He is pleased with you and that He has forgiven you. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, decree that you meet Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I decree, I, I ask Allah to decree that you meet him on his house al-Kawthar, that you meet him, you, you do salam to him, he, re, he, he returns your salam, he recognizes you and that he gives you the water of Kawthar with his blessed hand. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to decree that you cross the sirat behind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the, in the hibs and aman of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that you are granted Jannah to fill those with Allah bi ghayri hisab and the company of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fill Jannah. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyil kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya rahman rahimin wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ameen, ameen, sunnah, ameen. Uh, Jazakallah khair, Shaykh, for this wonderful uh, talk teaching us to how to prepare for 2021. Uh, since we are in the last...